flag in the air. And he's going to house it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football, sports betting, and NASCAR home. I'm your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. With me to break down the final NFL game of the 2021 season, it's Brian Twining. What's up, Brian? Man, I cannot believe that we've we've finally made it to the end of the year. It always seems like it was so long ago that we just yep. started, but also went by so fast. Yep. So now that we're finally here at Super Bowl week, I like I'm finally getting into <laughs> diving into all of these ridiculous player props and just game props. It's one of the most wonderful weekends of the year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean we started back in uh, probably what, June going through some fantasy stuff. And then we got into football and now, you know, or uh, NFL picks and 18 weeks of that. And then the playoffs and um, ups and downs and some real hot times and some real cold times and a lot in between. And yeah. And now we have, uh, now we have the, the big game, the Super Bowl. Um, so let's jump into that and get some initial thoughts as we have the Rams. Uh, Second year in a row, the home team um, playing in their stadium. It's ridiculous. uh, Hosting the Cincinnati Bengals. uh, A Super Bowl that I'm not sure literally anybody saw coming, uh, but here we are. Uh, We got Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins coming to town. Um, I guess just initial lean, initial thoughts. Obviously, uh, this line has been pretty solid most of the week, although um, I'm sure as you we will dive into um, there is an interesting w- couple different uh, numbers that have been yep. uh, popping up as we've, as we've kind of gone along and, and game game day is rapidly approaching. But I guess from an, just an overview kind of grand picture, like where are you at with this game? What are your expectations? And then ultimately how are we going to use those thoughts to kind of, you know, bet sides and totals here? Yeah. So when the line first dropped, it was initially Rams minus three and a half everywhere. And it got bet up to four and a half rather quickly, but has since kind of bounced around between those numbers. And I mean, throughout each day over the last two weeks, we've seen this number fluctuate from four and a half down to four. And finally today, like you said, there is one sports book where you can get it at a little bit lower than four. Um, and, you know, for me, when I first saw it, it I, I jumped on the Rams, like uh, just talent wise and what we've seen recently. I know they struggle against the 49ers early, but they always struggle against them. But when you look at their first two playoff games, they were dominant in those games outside of the final four minutes against Tampa Bay. Like this is a team that was kicking the crap out of two of the best offenses in football and Tom Brady. So yeah. It, and when you look at historical data from the Super Bowl, I know teams getting points are, I think they're like seven and one outright over the last eight years. So, I mean, for me, the spread isn't necessarily the direction I'd go if I was a Bengals backer. I'd probably prefer to take them on the money line. But if you like the Rams, I, I'm just going to take, I'm going to be confident that they're going to cover the spread. Yeah. Um, like you. I saw the number drop and um, had a strong feeling. Um, Unlike you, um, I was team Cincinnati. Um, I have been a Rams non-believer for (laughs) the entire run of the playoffs. Uh, This is your NFC Patriots. And it has really uh, took it. Well, unlike the Patriots, it's actually taken a hit to my wallet as opposed to padding my wallet. True. Um, True. But yeah, it's just. Like, I know the Rams, like, they have names that are really interesting, and obviously they have pieces that are really great, and their defensive front press, front seven, um, based on what Tennessee did, has a chance to just absolutely demolish the the Bengals. Um, Cooper Cup has been absolutely incredible, and if they try and put Eli Apple on him, uh, good luck. <laughs> that would be... That would but be like, hilarious. We also saw Eli Apple make the game saving tackle in the first half against the Chiefs. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. And because of that tackle, the Chiefs didn't score in the final play of the, fir- the uh, first half. And 
and the that yeah, opened the door for the for the Bengals to come back. So, and to your point about kind of the the Rams' affinity to be willing to give the game back a little bit, that I could even see the Rams getting up. You know, seventeen three, looking great, looking like they're cruising, and all of a sudden we're sitting in the fourth quarter, and it's twenty three twenty one, and um, you know Joe Burrow has the ball driving down the field, and Evan McPherson's the kicker who seemingly can't man. miss. Oof. So that that was part of my like, okay, I'll grab it at four, knowing that I could see and easily see a field goal game either way here. Um, and, and then as the week's gone along, I've trended a little bit more to your side um but i i still i still feel pretty good about about the Bengals. and honestly anybody who wants to bet the super bowl and just not deal with the side um, i think is absolutely in a great spot to do that because this is the week to do that the one thing i will say is you do want to have kind of a formula or an idea or a blueprint to how this game is going to play out. Exactly. What, when you go to make your prop bets. Yeah, no, I, I think that's, that's really important when you look at how, I mean, most of us are going to be sprinkling the, or I can't even call it sprinkling. Like we, it's going to be, it's going to be <laughs> like the out your Tommy gun and just. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that, that's normally the way my Super Bowl card goes. Um, but you kind of want to have a story told. I, I, you've mentioned it on multiple occasions. Like you want to be able to tell the story as to how Cincinnati covers the four and a half. Is it them keeping the game close or is it them high scoring? And then that's going to help you when you're picking your player props or vice versa. Like if you're a Rams backer, you really am not too enticed by the, the potential of this game being high scoring. Um, Cause Cincinnati's offense is one of the most explosive in the NFL. And you don't really want to see this game get into that kind of shootout. So you're, you're kind of hoping for a defensive battle, in my opinion, if you're taking the Rams to cover the line. So I think that, 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 that's really good advice for people looking to pepper the board here. Yep. Yep. Um, in terms of a total, um, pulling that up right now, just to see it's, where we're... it's been stagnant for okay. 48 and uh, over a half, a week. pretty much. Yeah. It's, um, it, it, I think it opened at 50 and it got bet down, uh, 40, 49 and a half is what action network showing me 48 and a half currently. Yeah. Uh, for 75,000 bets. That's how yep. crazy this gets. Uh, 62% yeah. of your bets are on the over. Uh, 20% of your money is on the over. Brian, Inter- <laughs> where is your bet and your money going if you were looking at backing uh, the over or under here? So I, I'm i I'm leaning the under in this game because I am a Rams backer. I uh, I mean, we're, we're going to give our picks and everything, but uh, I'll give it away right now. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm laying the points with the Rams. Um, and I, just to I be like, clear, you're taking the, the lovely number Caesars is handing out. So, uh, I honestly, I'll take the Rams up to up to the, the largest spot we've seen them at four and a half. I, I don't okay. mind doing it. I actually don't mind doing it all the way up to five and a half. Um, the one thing I will say is if you like the Rams and you think the Rams can dominate this game, this is going to be an alternate lines. line. Yes. I would, I would look at seven and a half. I would look at nine and a half. I might even look at 13 and a half. If that front seven exactly. is able to wreck and do the pressure that we think they can, and we've seen what the Titans did to them a couple weeks ago, um, and the uh, and Matthew Stafford doesn't hand the ball over or turn, throw any pick sixes and Cam Akers and keep the ball off the carpet, the Rams could 31 to 13 their way and just have the whole second half be a, a celebration. Interesting, uh, not to deviate too too much here, but uh, interesting stat or like just trends I kind of researched. The so the Rams were actually kind of middle of the road in terms of pressure on opposing quarterbacks, but they finished second in the NFL in total sacks. And I think that has a lot to do with how good they were on third downs as a defense. Like they get opponents in third downs and third and longs rather frequently. And that's when they get the majority of their pressure. And (laughs) the Bengals team who is going to want to avoid those third and longs. I think this is a spot where you see them come out throwing on early downs a lot, which opens up more opportunity for sacks. But, um, Going back to the total here, the reason why I like the under is because of the way the Rams have been able to dominate uh, the first two playoff games in the first half. It, I just 
I see this as a potential of, like you said, the Rams getting up early, maybe 17 to three, or this is 13 to, to three at halftime or something of that nature. And then they kind of throttle it down a little bit in the second half, yeah. trying to get the ball away from Cincinnati. The one thing I will add in, I, I shared this with you on Twitter probably a few days ago now. Yeah. Uh, since 2000, Super Bowl favorites of four or more points have gone two, ten, and one against the spread. Um, and uh, as a lovely commenter uh, under John Ewing's tweet said, Super Bowl teams off of a dog. So uh, teams that were uh, underdogs in their pre in the championship game are uh, are eleven and uh, are off off. Of, so they they won the game straight up, not co- not just covered, but won the game straight up. In the Super Bowl, are eleven and zero against the spread. So, well, I just saw a stat today. Like the of the last eight Super Bowls, uh, the the dog has covered dogs of three or more have covered seven times, and also the Bengals covered eight of the eleven games this year as underdogs, and I think that it was seven of those they won outright. So, I mean, that just goes back to what I'm saying. I think yeah. you're better off taking the plus money with them on the money line. Then and as an underdog of three or more points, Joe Burrow is 11 and two against the spread. So if you like trends, there are some numbers for you. If you like, you know, hand of the dirt takes of uh, 11 on 11, there's some thoughts there for you. Um, in terms of the total, I, I love the under here. Um, these are two teams that, despite having amazing passing offenses, want to run the ball, yeah, want to yes. be a little more conservative than you would assume, um, per Salvetri over on uh, Twitter. Um, the Bengals had 24th down attempts, and the Rams had 19. Both are bottom five in the NFL. So they're they're <laughs> happy to punt. They're happy to look at you know field position, especially the Rams. I was going to say, they're, with... With both of their kickers, I they're they're more than accepting of taking the midfield. Yep, they'll uh, take their they'll take their threes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I think I think under is absolutely the play first half, and especially in Super Bowl. Super Bowls always start slow, so I like taking the first half of with with the full game because then if we get a wild second half where Joe Burrow, you know, yeah. finally gets to throw because I think that. Like I think part of what makes Zach Zach Taylor kind of a a, don- a donkey uh, is is kind of the oh shit now we're in trouble okay now yeah. you can throw Joe instead of going hey I have a really good quarterback and three stud wide receivers including arguably one of the best if not the best in the NFL as a rookie um, maybe we should like you know first down play action mix it in and let Joe throw. It throughout the game and and then obviously you can still mix in joe mixon um and the running game and still do all the other things you want but i think like he it's kind of his panic button his his oh shit button and then all of a sudden it looks really good so you know i i just the, both these teams are, are gonna want to be conservative and as we go through my picks and my plays and my props you're gonna see that as a theme and um yeah i like i like the under a lot here uh, just n- not to throw a wrench in the spokes here, but throw it, the, throw it. The Rams over their last 10 games, including the playoffs, they have alternated their listed total over under each time they're coming off of an under against San Francisco. So if you're a believer in trends or that's like, that's the way you like to go, then the over is definitely live for this spot. Yeah. I feel like Bengals uh, in the over is going to be like the popular bet. And obviously we're not doing teasers, but Bengals up to what? Yeah. And then teasing it down. And and the the over over. of over 42 and a half. Like, I feel like that's going to be very, very popular. Yeah. I, I really doubt that there's a world where we see the Bengals win this game when it's played in the, in the upper teens or the low twenties. I think Cincinnati would have to put up 30 plus in this spot. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, that's probably right. It, it, it's probably much like a, uh, either a Joe Burrow comeback or they just start really hot 
um, and put up, you know, 24 points in the first half and then kind of cruise to a 31, 27 win or something. I don't know, but uh, no, I think, I think I agree with that. Just as long as this game is nothing like the Patriots and Rams, uh, just defensive nothingness. I feel like we're due for, um, I feel like we're due for a stinker though. Like, I feel like we've had some really good games of, of late. Uh, let's go back. Well, so Tampa yeah, so dominated last year, Tampa dominated last year. Uh, Kansas city, San Francisco was in, it was, that was a good game, game until the fourth quarter. Yeah. And, and it kind of, the, the, I don't think the score is as indicative. No, I guess we've had some really crappy ones. Like we had, we had that new England Rams super bowl 13 well, to three. Well, so, okay. So to go back to my Rams pick that that's one of the reasons why I like them. Just, I mean, removing the fact that favorites have been atrocious, the last six Super Bowls have all been decided by six or more points. Yeah. So if we're if we're planning on this to continue along with the trends that we've seen of late, with teams going for two and just weird mm-hmm. scoring numbers, like laying less than that number, I think I, I I'm okay. I'm comfortable laying the points with the Rams. Yeah. Like I'm going all the way back. Like going back to 2013. There's been like three games that have been awesome. Uh, it was the, the overtime Falcon, the 28, three. Yeah. The new, well, so new England, Seattle, which is yes. the, the, the pick My, at the end, yep. um, the, the new England, Atlanta, um, and the, um, the, the Nick Foles game. Where is that? All with Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah. Weird how that works. <laughs> Uh, a lot, of, yeah, a lot of lopsided, and obviously in Kansas City, the Niners. I'll throw them in there too. But, yeah, yeah, that was a good game. But the you score, know, like you uh, said, basically the score ten, year, how good ten the years was. of games, and like four of them were were compelling finishes. Um, yeah. And I feel like, especially with the way this playoffs has gone, like the f- between from wild card to championship round, like we've had some of the best, most consistent games we've ever had. Like, I don't feel like any of the games have been just truly terrible, even when they looked bad. Like, yeah, especially, even like the like the, the Rams Bucks and the Chiefs Bengals, both of them looked bad, but they finished so strong and compelling at the end that I, I kind of think it was, you know, ended up being great football, even when it really wasn't that great all along. Yeah. Um. OK, let's dive into MVP, because um, I think there is a lot of options to get here. Um, and I do have a few little nuggets just for, for, for a little, a uh, little bit of a, a little bit of reference. So we've had 56 Super Bowls, um, 32 of the Super Bowl MVPs have been quarterback, even in maybe in situations where maybe they shouldn't have necessarily gotten it. Um, like, especially like the Damian Williams Super Bowl. Um, oh, yeah. but if it's close, they're going to lean quarterback, especially if it's a Patrick Mahomes, a Tom Brady. And I think both Matthew Stafford and Joe Burrow are in that, that, that clump of if, if it's close, we'll probably give it to the quarterback. Um, but 32 of the 56 have been. Um, quarterbacks, seven running backs, seven receivers, um, and then six defensive players. Um, and then if we go to shorten the window a little bit since 2000, 14 quarterbacks, four wide receivers, four defensive players. So the last 18 Super Bowls, or 22 rather, um, I can do some math. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of you know, with the NFL going the way it has gone with the, the way they want to hand out these awards. And obviously that's why Stafford is basically even money. And Joe Burrow yeah. is plus 225. Like there's ways where you can do this too, where if you like, I think Stafford is the MVP or I think Joe Burrow is the MVP and give yourself some better odds. You can, you know, same game, same game parlay, take your, take your favorite winner throw in some passing yards, throw in how many touchdowns, that kind of stuff, build yourself a way better line. And, and, and in theory, tell yourself the same, the same story. Cause like, I don't think Stafford or Burrow win throwing, you know, 180 yards and one or two touchdowns. Like, I think they have to do 250 and two at, at, at pretty much a bare minimum, maybe, maybe 202. Yeah. Um, 
I think this is a spot where like looking at the defensive players, uh, honestly, for yeah. me, I would skip right over Aaron Donald. hundred percent. I just think, I think that the number is far too low at, at 16 to one. Like you would need a multiple sack fumble recovery for a touchdown performance for him to take home the MVP. Yeah. And, it's, and at 16 to one, those numbers are far too short. I, I mean, I think that there's a there's a legit shot that a, a Jalen Ramsey at a hundred to one in a game where it's two offenses that throw a ton, we could see Cincinnati throw the ball fifty plus times. And if Jalen Ramsey takes one to the house and has another interception, maybe a few tackles, and this game is, you know, thirteen to seven or uh, of that nature with mm-hmm. neither quarterback putting up huge days for me that makes a lot more sense because it's going to cost you a lot less money. Yeah. And I think he has a similar shot as Aaron Donald. I think you can take, you know, 50 bucks and sprinkle them over five of these guys and, and really give yourself a, a good shot at hitting a big number. Cause like you, I agree. Like a lot of the time when it's not a quarterback, it's, it's a, a defensive player that maybe yep. you didn't see coming in. You know, skipping over Donald, I think, makes sense. I think even maybe even skipping over Ramsey, although he makes a lot of sense in kind of like a, what Tyron Matthew has done, where he could, yeah. he's just so, he's in so many places. But if you think about scheme and you think about a way an offense wants to attack a defense, they're going to do certain things to attack certain players. If those players can make the big plays, all of a sudden you're talking about a Malcolm Smith MVP or a Larry Brown MVP. And with that in mind, and I just pulled some names to throw in here, but like if I'm the Bengals, I'm putting all my attention into stopping Aaron Aaron Donald first. If Aaron Donald's going to have double and triple teams the whole game, here comes Leonard Floyd at 150 to one around the edge trying (laughs) to get a a sack. Yep. If he gets a great example, if he gets maybe they try and throw a screen to P Ryan and he jumps up and grabs it, runs into the end zone touchdown. And, you know, especially if the if the Rams win and they, you know, a lot of people, a lot of the, the things I've been hearing this week is a Rams kind of a comfortable win. Maybe they win 23 to 16 or something weird and he scores two of the three touchdowns. All of a sudden you're looking at the MVP or maybe yeah. he gets one of the three touchdowns, but he has two turnovers and he has like three sacks and he has like a monster game. So th- that's the name I'm looking at. Sam Hubbard on the other side, I think, could v- play a very similar role. Um, Eli have, Apple, who, who absolutely stinks at yes, two fifty. If if I'm if I'm the Rams, I'm throwing at Eli Apple as much as possible, and if two of those plays hit him in the hands, one of them ends up in the end zone. Maybe he makes a key play at the. Maybe it's a you know maybe it's, tw- it's twenty one to to seventeen, and Stafford's throwing into the end zone. Um, a la Michael Crabtree, and he's just in Eli Apple makes one miraculous play or gets a defensive stop like he did against the Chiefs. Then you're looking at an Eli Apple at 250 to one. Because if I mean, if we're taking shots, let's take shots, yeah. And uh, right, right in line with that, everyone's attention right now is on the Iceman Evan McPherson as far as a potential kicker winning the MVP here, but. If, if I'm going to go that route, I'd rather go with Matt Gay, who actually was better <laughs> percentage-wise this year, and he's also somebody who's who can kick it from deep. He's 4 of 5 from 50, 7 of 8 from 40 to 49. And again, if this is a game that we're expecting to hit the under on the total and say it's just kind of a touchdown, the, all the touchdowns are spread out among multiple running backs and maybe Stafford throws for one and only puts up you know, 190 passing yards with a pick and yeah. Matt Gay goes four for four from yeah. you know, three of them from 40 and one from 50 and say he nails the game winner. I, yeah, like a like a 23 to 20 with like four or five field goals. Yeah, like it, it, I'd much rather get the extra seven, seven yeah. points on a Gay than taking. Yeah. I don't know uh, that I could bet any kicker, but I think uh, I think you bring up a good point there. Hey, at two hundred to one, man, just put yeah. five bucks on that, and well, that's what I'm saying. You take, you, you take your instead of taking your fifty dollar bet and throwing it on Odell or throwing it on yes. Von Miller, um, even that their numbers are are kind of compelling. Um, I think that's I think that's yeah, a way to yeah. do it. Yeah, sprinkle the board at the bottom, make the game interesting, man. 
maybe we get a Van Jefferson kick, <laughs> kick or punt return touchdown, and then he catches a long one. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I will say Cooper Cup is an is very intriguing at wide receiver because yeah. he's been returning punts, yeah. so it it opens up the opportunity that he gets a non receiving touchdown, which yeah. And Normally. we've seen him, like, he's so vital to what this offense does, right? Say he catches 12 balls for 175 yards and two and touchdowns. And a lot of them are short short catches, right. too. That's going to have to be the, 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 the reasoning. I think the other thing that could be in play is, is like, an end around. Yes. Or McVay opens it up and they do they do something to Cup and then Cup throws it down the field to Van Jefferson. And then yes. all of a sudden you're looking at a guy who has maybe two or three total touchdowns, a passing, you know, gets involved. There's I want somebody who I think can get involved in multiple ways mm-hmm. and give myself lots of outs. And I think Cooper Cup, even at six to one, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um it because if yeah, because if I'm if I'm looking at a non QB I think Cooper Cup, and this it's weird because like I feel like in previous Super Bowls and all, um, there's been like a lot, a lot of pieces where you could really like see it, tell yourself a story of this player, that player, but like both these offenses are so funneled to their key players that like the Bengals are going to throw to Higgins and Boyd and Chase and maybe Uzama or P. Ryan. If he, and we'll see how healthy Uzama is. Yeah, we'll is. see how healthy yeah. he is. Even better to limit that target window. The Rams yeah, are going to throw to Cup. They're going to throw to Odell. They're going to throw yep. to Jefferson and maybe Higby if he's healthy. Like that's yeah. very narrow focus. So that's going to pummel targets to the guys that we care about. And I think going to open up stuff um, in terms of offensive MVP. Yeah. Th- circling back to the top of the board real fast. Uh, I do think that Odell Beckham is a name to keep an eye on, yeah. knowing that he can throw the ball. So if this is a game where he has a passing touchdown and a reception yeah. for a touchdown, like he's definitely uh, live as far as MVP at 28 to one. Yeah. I think we tell ourselves the same story we told the Cooper cup, but you know, the Bengals are so focused on taking him away and mm-hmm. then they put Eli Apple on Odell and then Odell's just has, has a 10 for 180 and a touchdown and throws and he's another been getting one. To- more involved. Uh, in the latter weeks of the yeah, season, really, especially in the playoffs, so. really leaned on him as the and if and if uh, if Higby's out, that's even more opportunities to go to Odell's way. Yep. So, um, no, I, I think I think that's a good call, and I think that's part of why he's priced up where he is because, um, yeah, it's it's it, not normal to see two wide receivers within like fifty to one. Yeah, yeah. Um, any other names you want to throw out there? I don't. I mean. There is some random, like if you want to get real crazy, name some of these defenders. But I just, I, I, I think you can take shots on defenders with upside, without yeah. dipping below two fifty. Yeah, I, th- I think, I think the names that we mentioned, like for me, that that's kind of the way that I sprinkle my MVP things mm-hmm. because I, I make a ton of bets, but all right. for all kind of recreational purposes, especially on MVP voting. Uh, cause who the hell wants to bet big money on Matthew Stafford at even like that? Just, that's just, yeah. If I'm, if I'm a betting syndicate and I have 10 grand, I want to get down on the game. I think it makes a lot of sense. It's a good investment yeah, exactly. for, for us that are throwing 50 bucks total on yeah. our MVP bets. Like I'd rather spread it out. Give me that 200 to one chance. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, let's talk some props, Brian, cause there is a lot of props to get Woo-hoo. into. Um, I do have a few that I want to talk about and then we can jump into our player specific ones. Cause there is, there is some good ones. Like I don't, I mean, don't, don't bet on the tails or heads. Like if you want to do that, find a buddy you're watching the Super Bowl with. I always know. bet tails. <laughs> it's such a waste of money. I'll, I'll, I'll take heads. I bet a Just dollar. I it, bet me. It's a dollar bet. Every Minus year. my, you're, you're giving the casino money to, for I know, 50, minus 50 105 here so um i yeah and gatorade's fun but like you you kind of tell yourself a story do you think the rams win maybe you go blue uh if you or the yellow if you did think. you know that since they've been recording this red has never been dunked red has wow 12 to 1 take it now <laughs> it's gonna it's got it's due it's due um i do like this one um 
it, it, you do have to lay minus 140, so it is a little bit juiced. But under 23 and a half for the first touchdown score, because of what we've talked about with this. Well, it, you know, like think about all the, the guys that, that we involved. spoke about are all numbered 23 or below. Yeah. Other than Chase, Tegan. Burrow. Oh, and Tyler uh, Boyd. but Yeah, but Chase, Burrow, Cooper Cup, uh, Matthew Odell. Stafford. Uh, I think the the yeah the thing that kills you is like a CJ Uzama, a T, a T Higgins, Tyler Joe Boyd, um, but that like so many of the good players that I think it's it's something that makes a lot of sense. Well, it, just like we already talked about, if if your story is told that the Rams jump out to a lead in this game, all of their key contributors are all numbered under twenty three. Yeah, so Odell. like that that fits in line with those wagers, <laughs> unless you get like a. Leonard Floyd pick six, the first play of the game, <laughs> or Aaron Donald strip sack. Uh, true. Um, I am looking for some good ones, but uh, Brian, why don't you go ahead and, and give the people some of the ones that jumped out to you when you were um, setting up for this podcast? Well, so like I, I jumped right to Matthew Stafford, his pass attempts over 35 and a half. I mean, he gets over this number routinely within the first you know, 45 minutes, the first three quarters, the first 48 minutes of game time, um, his longest completion over 39 and a half, you know, we're going to see some shots. Like this is the biggest game he's ever are played we? in. Are we? You're, oh yeah, definitely. You're going to see him go up top to Van Jefferson. Maybe, Matthew maybe Stafford, Matthew Stafford under 283.5 passing yards on the card. I see. I, I don't mind the total, but like I said, like for me, I see this as a, a, a blitzkrieg early by the Rams and then kind of a, a slow down towards the back end. Um, yeah, I could see that. I think this is a clean game by Stafford. I'm taking the under uh, half of interception, mainly because it's plus money here. Uh, um, even though since Cincinnati has been one of the best teams in creating turnovers over the last, I think it's like five weeks, they've created like 15 opponent turnovers. So that this is really risky, but that's why you're getting plus money here. Um, I will say if you like the Stafford under and you have access to bet rivers, you can get two ninety nine point five. Ooh, yeah, um, definitely. It is minus one fifty five. So you do have to pay the juice, but that's all right. I think having an extra 15 to 20 yards, um, is worth that, that cost. So something to think about. Yeah. Uh, sticking with quarterbacks real quick for me, like Joe Burrow completions. I'm piggybacking off of his completions under 24 and a half. Once again, I think the Rams, they do enough on third downs to prevent the Bengals from continuing drives, and that's kind of how they kind of rack up a bunch of completions. I so guess my I, question for you there is if you think the Rams – like, it depends. Like, if you think the Rams get out to a lead, it feels like he's going to smash that number. But if it's close – Yeah, but even if it's a lead, though, uh, like for me, if it's, a, if it's a bigger lead towards the back end of the second half or yeah. even going into the second half, I think you see longer pass attempts, which are less likely to be completed. That's and true. if they are, it kind of narrows how many plays. What's our number get. again? 24 and a half. Yeah, because even last week where they were down, uh, what, 21 to three, he only, he only completed 23 passes. Yeah, and the and the Rams are one of the best in the NFL in especially once teams get behind. I know they've given up a lot of yards this year, but they they've limited opponents to pretty bad passing percentages. Yeah. You know, Tom Brady, Kyler Murray, even Jimmy Garoppolo didn't have a great game even though they were winning. Uh so yeah, it I like the under there regardless of whether Burrow goes over the yards or touchdowns whatever, but I I think this sneaks under. I like the interceptions. Um Although it is pretty funny that it's minus 130, minus 140, up to 165. Uh, a <laughs> lot of people think he's going to throw at least one pick, which I yes. think is hilarious. Yeah. Uh, sticking with the quarterbacks, I am taking both quarterbacks to attempt more than two and a half rushes. Um, so they have to run three times or more. Um, I think if this from the Bengals' perspective, if that pass rush is coming after Burrow, he's running for his life. And he's going to run three times. And I think Stafford runs three times. Yeah, I think Stafford's a little more elite than we give him credit for. Yeah, and he's he's been running for touchdowns, like sneaks. And I think technically, if you take a knee, it counts as a rush attempt. 
So if you think the Rams take a knee to finish out the that game or finish out the half, that is brilliant, my friend. I think it actually counts as a rush <laughs> attempt. Yeah, because it doesn't go as a sack for the opposing team. So no, which is part of why I don't love the rushing yards. I think they're both very fine, and if you wanted to get to it, uh, like Stafford's rush total is four and a half yards or five and a half yards, depending on where you look. I think, um, I think six is close. I think he gets, you know, he, he, like we said, he's been running a little bit more, but he like Burrow, I could see running for like a 10 yard run. Like we saw it last yeah. week in Kansas city. I don't know that I see that for Stafford. I think it's kind of a, either a dive or maybe like, Oh, there's pressure. Let me go forward. I just, and I were like, once again, I worry that he takes a knee, um, you know, either at the half or at the, at the end of the game and ends up costing them, you know, a yard or two that ends up being the difference. Cause we've seen that happen before where the quarterback has the rushing prop and yep. then all of a sudden he's taking a knee or two at the end of the game and he goes from 11 yards to nine yards and, um, and your, and your props toast. So something to think about for sure. Yeah. And then, uh, sticking with Stafford and his rushing, uh, I, I think him as the first Rams touchdown of the day, or just betting him as the first touchdown of the day is definitely live. I mean, 22 to one to be the first Rams to score a touchdown. And then if like, for me, if I'm liking that, or even the possibility that he has an anytime I'm hammering the under on the shortest yards for the touchdown under one and a half, like especially it. knowing that both of these teams have alpha males on the outside playing wide receiver. There's a chance that we get a PI in the end zone with the ball placed at the one, uh, or one and a half is it placed at the one and a half when there's a penalty in the end zone or is it the one i think it's the one and a half. i think yeah. it's the two yard line so i don't know it, look that up you're, so you're gonna get an under like if, if yeah. you get a pi in the end zone in all likelihood you're gonna score they're gonna score from that distance and that's gonna either push or hit the under so yeah i, I like the i like the plus 650 anytime score i think that makes a lot of sense um what about ben skoranek Eight to one anytime <laughs> touchdown. I know he completely blew it against the Niners. I'm but not the fact that they're that giving guy. him shots. And if Tyler Higby doesn't play, maybe he runs a few more routes and gets a shot in the end zone. Or maybe he's the guy that catches the Odell or Cooper Cup passing touchdown. Yeah, I mean he Trent could, he... Taylor at nine to one also makes sense. Like he doesn't run routes and he is so sel- seldom in, in, involved. So that's a little bit worrisome. But he's also a quick gadget guy where I could see him ending up on the field, you know, when they're at third and three or a third and goal on the three um, well, and catching it. Well, they ran it last week for the two point conversion when he lined up and he uh, got the little yeah. rub route from chase. So, yeah. Uh, Kendall Blanton being at plus two thirty is absurd. I know Higby is probably going to miss this game. Um, yeah, that's just like, we should be getting like 12 to one on him. That's, that's absurd. <laughs> Um, I kind of like Darrell Henderson, and we'll talk more about the running backs here in a bit. But plus two fifty, he is he is going to be playing in this game. I don't know how involved he's. Like, I feel like he, he steals more touches from Sony Michelle than he does Cam Akers for me. Yeah, yeah. Especially having not played in so many Maybe weeks, he gets a screen pass and goes does the Samaj P Ryan scores a touchdown. Oh man, that would be. Looking at two touchdowns plus two fifty for Cooper Cup to score two touchdowns. That seems like that's a lot. far too short for that. Yeah, Joe Mixon plus four fifty. Acres at five and a half to one. If you think Acres is healthy and plays the full game, is is a number that makes a lot of sense. Um, CJU if he plays fifteen to one, I don't hate. But that's that seems yeah. The, the, Honestly, the problem I, is that the these things have become so popular. That yeah, the books are pricing them up so they don't get absolutely murdered. Yeah, exactly. I, I was gonna say like for me, um, on, on especially two plus touchdowns, like I skip right over Cooper Cup because I'm yeah. sorry, but two and a half to one for two touchdowns that's just far too short. Yeah, I wouldn't even begin until I get. I, I like Odell's shot at two plus, but even at seven and a half to one for a guy that has barely caught any touchdowns this year, it, not not a number that I like. T. Higgins at ten to one makes some sense, knowing his prowess as jump balls in the end zone. But I have a hard time thinking Cincinnati scores enough for that. So 
I, I'm going Rams 20 to one, like their defense or special teams. It, I'd rather put yeah, five I like, bucks on that. I like DST to score. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I I actually bet that every year for special teams defense touchdown. Like that's that's in there every single year. Yeah, that's a number that used to be much, much bigger. It was like fifty yeah. to one. Now it's like nothing. But well, and then uh another prop too, um going back to Odell throwing a touchdown, another one I place every single year is over, over two, and, two and, a and a half different positions to throw like a pass. It. Like I you know a trick sense. play is coming. You know who else could be in the mix for that is Johnny Hecker. Fake oh punt. yes, Johnny Hecker over the top. All of a sudden, random Ben Ben Scar- in- Johnny Hecker to Ben Skaronic touchdown. Oh, no. There's your prop no. right there. No, Johnny Hecker to Jake Funk. Yeah, him too. As the up man for the yeah, for the Rams. Sure. Let's see. I know we're getting off it. the rails here. Anytime yeah, I mean, touchdown for it, Jake Funk, a hundred to one. It, it's a Super Bowl, and we're going over props. If you're still watching at this point, thank you for watching. Yes, thank you for yes. subscribing. Uh, let us know your favorite prop down below in the comments. Um, couple I have more. another goofy one real quick. Uh, Go. For those of you that have been long, long time subscribers or this is your first time checking out football, you know, NASCAR is coming up soon. Um, they have a on on one of our offshores that Kyle and I like to go to. They have the average speed at the Daytona uh, 500. Per, for miles per hour, which is normally in between like 144 and 148 because they factor in like cautions and all that, I think. Yeah. Versus Matthew Stafford first half passing yards. Ooh, give me that. Give me that NASCAR speed, baby. Oh, I'm taking the Stafford first half because it's plus money. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's plus 120, plus 130. So he throws for like 200 yards in the first. 200 I'll, yards in the first half and then like 75 yards in the second half. Yeah, but I, I could see Stafford going for like 150, 155 in the first half. And that I think that would be enough. Okay. I like it. I like the crossover too. I, I appreciate that. Um, so let's hit, let's hit some of the running backs. I got a few there. Um, Darrell Henderson's going to play in this game. Sony Michelle is going to play in this game. Cam Akers is a little banged up. Shoulder thing. Under 16 and a half rushes, under 65 rushing yards, acres. Boom, boom. That I love. Absolutely. I mean, I we, we are notorious for betting way too many overs. Uh, yeah. But I think I think I'm going to try and be more pessimistic and just hammer unders, especially with the running game um, and, and see how it does for me. Well, especially um, knowing the way these offenses operate, I think this is a spot where you see maybe a lot of volume in terms of running, but not a lot of production. Yep. Yep. I think I think that makes sense. Um, Joe Mixon rush attempts is interesting because even last week where we saw a game where the, the Chiefs got up big and Bengals had to come back, he still got 20 plus carries. Yep. Over 16 and a half is minus 105. I don't love hammering the over, but like Zach Taylor is going to want to run the ball. And if you think maybe it's 31 to three and is, you know, absolute dumpster fire from the Bengals, then yeah, I mean, the under makes sense, but people are hammering the under. And I, I don't know if I want to go there. I feel like, I feel like if, if I, if I was betting this and I'm actually going to just because of the number, I'm taking over 16 and a half for, for Joe Mixon and it makes sense for me. Right. Cause I like the Bengals. I think they keep it close. And if they keep it close, then Joe Mixon's running. Yeah, it, that's that number really stood out to me because I know in past weeks I have been betting Joe Mixon like yards unders and then mm-hmm. attempts unders. But like you said, it, I'm really interested to see how the Bengals come out and the the way that they attack this Rams defense, knowing that they're kind of stout up the middle with Donald and then it's Ramsey and company on the outside. Like, do they try to run the ball a ton early? Do we see a lot of quick passing early on to just kind of soften up the defense? Um, for me, the running back props, other than like production, like attempts and everything, yeah. I'm I'm too scared off right now. Yeah, we'll see. And I, I kind of like mixing to run a lot, but not to be very effective. This is what I will say. Since 11 21, so November 21st, Mixon has 30 carries, 28 carries, 19 carries, 18 carries, 17 carries, 18 carries, 12 in the final game of the season against KC, uh, 17 against the Raiders in round one, 
the 14 against the Titans and then 21. So twice in explain to me how he gets 14 in a game that 14 carries 54 yards. That's all he had against Tennessee. (laughs) I am like Derrick Henry was talking about it on Twitter or they were interviewing him. And he said he's still sick that that there's football and he's not playing. And I, I like I, the Titans should be in the Super Bowl. That's that's more, that's where my head goes. But um, maybe I'm just no, the forty niners should be in the Super Bowl. You know what, Brian? I had a Titans and Niners Super Bowl from the beginning of the season, hundred and something to one. Um, would have paid out a very very nice payday. Um, still bitter didn't happen. Um, and I had both of them to win the Super Bowl at very very nice numbers. So yes, bitter over here, bitter. Um, yeah, cause Mixon's ru- it's weird. So people don't think he runs a lot, but they think he's going to get over the rushing total. And I don't really understand that yeah, combination. His rushing total is not going and and each other. Right. Like if you think he's going to be not like getting like 12 to 15 carries, then I think he's under 60 yards. So I think if you can same game parlay those, especially like if you like the Rams, I think the Rams money line with Mixon under carries and under yards makes a hell of a lot of sense. And if you like the Bengals money line, you take the Bengals money line plus Mixon, Mixon over. over on yards and carries, and then you get to, you get home. Because um, even if he's like getting less than four yard less than four yards a carry, I still think he gets there if he gets 17, 18, 20 carries. Um. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take over 60 and a half and I'm going to take over 16 and a half. And I don't like Joe Mixon and I want to bet unders, but I just think both of those numbers provide value in a game where I think the Bengals keep it close. And I think Zach Taylor is going to want to run. Uh, that with that being said, though, I do like uh, Samaj P. Ryan over one and a half receptions. Yeah, for some odd reason, P. Ryan has turned into their third down Geo He's Bernard kind of in that be- hybrid. Before, but- before the injury, when Chris Evans took over, um, he was kind of he was kind of that. And like, I, I mean, I'll, I'll pull up the numbers now, but I feel like he's been a little bit more of the receiving back than I think any of us realized. But that's so interesting because at Oklahoma, P. Ryan was basically the bulldozer. Yeah. And Joe Mixon was Joe the Mixon scat was, back kind of. Yeah, they were. They like were. He was. They, every, were, he was they were the teammates, right? Yeah. 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 Look. So since basically, so yeah. So if we go back to October, he had five targets against uh, Green Bay. He had two targets, three targets, three targets. There was a couple ones in there, but then two, five, two, two, and one to close out the season. Um, obviously didn't get any targets against the Raiders, but two against Tennessee and four against Kansas city. I think he'll get three to five. And I, if I think that, then I think he, I think he can get two catches. Oh yeah. I mean, those are, those are easy, uh, completions out of the backfield most oftentimes. Yeah. Especially if there's all the Bengals are down a little bit and they throw he's in there. Um, you know, running a couple screens, just getting Joe Mixon a break. Like, I just need him to catch two balls. Two balls for five yards, I'm happy. Doesn't need to get 100 yards, just two balls. Two balls for two yards, I don't care. I like it. Uh, what else is on your list? Well, uh, I always like to get a little bit crazy here, but uh, sure. before I do that, Knowing that CJ Uzama is kind of banged up coming into this game and whether or not he plays, um, I mean, even if he does play, he's probably going to be limited to some capacity. So for me, I think Tyler Boyd props, like especially his receptions over like four and a half. I I like the over here because he's kind of that middle of the field running the shorter routes, a lot easier completions for Burrow. So I think there's a good opportunity there. And then also... Just as you know, a dart throw him to score the Bengals first touchdown at seven and a half to one, kind like of in that. the same thought process that he's kind of that over the middle of the field guy. And then getting a little wacky. Um, will there be offsetting penalties? Hell yes. C- a Cincinnati holding and a defensive pass interference on a very physical Rams pass defense. I think you get maybe multiples of those this game. And then 
Odell Beckham Jr. receiving yards against LSU men's basketball team total points scored on Saturday night against Mississippi State. Give me OBJ. I love it. And you'll have the number going into the game, which exactly. is exactly. <laughs> so then you could you could also piggyback that with okay, if I think OBJ is gonna gonna top them, I gotta take his over on his yards props. And then so it'll just add to the card as the weekend gets closer. I'm gonna take two two more. Uh longest rush under 13 and a half for acres and for Mixon. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um there's a little juice on Mixon. But I think I think Mixon's going to be an ac- a- accumulator, not a so he's like, going to be the big Zeke. play guy. So just you know, run for ten yards, that's fine. Just not fourteen. Uh, longest rush. I love it when both the running backs or both the quarterbacks have the same props. It makes my life a lot easier. I don't have to get. <laughs> Uh, true. Anything else we want to make sure we get into before we hit the, uh, our best bet. Uh, I have one more absolutely ridiculous one just for the fun of it. Um, over at our offshore friend, you can bet on commercial props, which commercial is shown first and Taco Bell versus Quicken Taco Bell all the way, baby. <laughs> I feel like if you were like helping to program this game, you could really get some insight to your buddies because you probably aren't allowed to do it. But yeah, um, I just found this one and I'm it's it's kind of a long shot, but it, that's what we're here for. First drive of the game is going to be a field goal. Both these teams kick really good field. have really good field oh, goal I, kickers. I First like drive of the game plus 475 for a field goal made. Really? Mm hmm. Haven't the Rams scored on like each the the previous two games? They scored at each of their first two drives before they played the Niners. Mm-hmm. Like they opened the games with long scoring drives. So that makes sense for them. And then Cincinnati's offense has been humming. Yeah, but I, I need a, no, like I not a not. A, I don't think it can be a PAT. I think it has to be an actual through like a field goal. No, no, no. I know, like okay. just have them just their first drive get into scoring range. Yeah, and, and then kick and a score, field goal because yeah. you're because you're like okay, we're gonna get legs. points on the board. Uh, although I will say, with the Super Bowl traditionally starting slow, I could see a punt, 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 kind of feeling each other out. But plus four seventy five is too good of a number, so. Exactly. Um, I will. I will add that to the card as well. All right, Brian. We 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 talked some props. Um, we talked some numbers. We found some stuff we like. I guess the only thing left is to is to hit our best bets and get out of here. Um, thanks to everybody who joined. Thanks to everybody who. Watch the show all season long. We Thank eclipsed you. 300 subscribers. We really appreciate it. As Brian mentioned, we are talking NASCAR. Uh, if there's other things you'd like us to talk about, drop them down in the comments. We're happy to to create the content, keep you guys coming back, keep you interested. Uh, we're finding winners, whether it's NASCAR or hockey or golf or you know Olympics, whatever it is, we're going to look for them. So if we think we can help you out, we'll definitely do that. And then uh, if there's something you want us to make a point of, diving into we will but brian for the last time of the nfl season what is your best bet well let me give first first of all i like the rams to cover whatever the line is give me the rams to win the super bowl and i'm taking the under 48 and a half before my best bet i'm deviating here i'm taking a player prop and i've kind of hated on them over the last couple of years but i think that had a lot more to do with this quarterback so give me an anytime touchdown for Odell Beckham Jr. My what best a bet time of Super to Bowl be 56. alive. What a time to be alive. <laughs> uh, there, Yeah, supposedly there was times where there looked like he was going to sign with New England and then all of a sudden he pivots to to the Rams. I, I think he's very happy with that decision. Yes. Um, I'm happy for Odell. I've always liked him. I thought he was a good player and got stuck in a a shitty quarterback situation time after time. And now he's got a good one. Um, even though I'm not the biggest, uh, the biggest Stafford guy. Um, I'm going to go with Joe Burrow 
over two and a half rushes. Like you, I'm going to go with a prop because I think that's where the value is. I think Burrow will run plenty no matter how this game pl- plays out. I think the, the pass rush is going to get there. Uh, I do like the Bengals to cover the four. I do like the under for the game and for the first half. Um, so those are all real bets I've made. Um, I believe I bet the P Ryan. I know I bet the acres unders on carries and yards. Um, I will try and tweet out my full card sometime between now and Sunday. Um, yeah, I, th- I think we'll try to gather our entire cards out and then we could like post them on Twitter or, or mm-hmm. maybe just even in the comments of, yeah, follow us uh, on, on Instagram at uh, AOP podcast and F it's all on the link tree. If you follow us on Twitter at FPAOP, you can go to all of our socials, but I'll try and get it all posted and stuff. Um, but as we, as we make real bets, we can, we can try and get those out. Mine, my list will be about this. Brian's list will be on the screen. <laughs> You'll be able to see it, but yeah, it'll um, be a novel. He, he likes to, he likes to get a little wonky and that's the fun thing. Even if it's just, you know, throw five bucks on a bunch of these, see what happens and um, keep yourself entertained. Even if it is a 31 to three Super Bowl. This is how you keep your life entertained. Yes, exactly. That's Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. Uh, Enjoy the Super Bowl. Enjoy uh, Rams, Bengals. Uh, like I mentioned, we'll be back for NASCAR. We'll try and get you some other content and we'll try and talk football between now and the end, uh, obviously start of the season. We'll get, uh, you know, futures, draft, 2022, 2023, do some college football futures. Maybe we'll dive in, you know, try and come back around March when, uh, the tournament gets going, all that good oh, stuff. Yeah. That's Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. You guys have a good one. <laughs>